Well, my gla my glasses are clean this time. I did a pretty good job of cleaning them the last time they got dirty, and they're staying pretty clean. I haven't been doing much. So today is going to look a little different. I've got the 50 millimeter equivalent on, so I look tighter. You get to see all my hairs and pores. I don't know how you're going to like that, but that's the way it is. The one thing that's going to be different about today is I'm going to talk more about January and how January is a pain in the patootie because there's nothing going on. It's cold. It's gray. The people aren't out doing anything. There's not a lot of activity. There's few events. Uh, there's really nothing going on. Uh, people have spent all their money late last year for Christmas. There's not a lot of money left. People aren't going out to eat. Plus, there's that pandemic thing, which keeps a lot of people home. So there's just a, not a lot going on. It's really, it's really difficult to find good photographs. And that's the good thing about January. It's difficult. It's really difficult. And it makes you explore parts of your photography that you really haven't looked at before. It makes you think about the things that you don't do on a normally good day where things are relatively easy to accomplish, where it's relatively easy to find a photograph, where walking out your door is all that's necessary to find a good photograph. And you have a day like today where walking out your door and walking 100 miles, it's going to be hard to find a photograph. What you need to do is to buckle down, think hard about what makes good photographs, what makes a good storytelling photograph, how you can go about doing it, and how you're going to do it for the day. And I've had that today. I've been thinking today of how I'm going to make a good photograph. There's no one out here. I don't want to do some artsy rocks, trees, leaves, grass, flowing brooks kind of thing. I really want a people picture, if at all possible. So I began to look around and think about what people are doing. Where are they going? What are they doing? And the biggest thing that people are doing is they're out taking walks, they're exercising. Some are running, some are walking, some are riding their bikes, and so I had to try to find a place, an angle that would allow me to do that. Didn't want to necessarily show any individual faces, but I did want to find what people were doing. So I went out, I went over to Sharon Woods Park, and I'm sure that one of the pictures you're gonna see down below as my final photo is gonna be something I shot out there. I stood on one of the picnic tables so I could get a slightly elevated view instead of a ground level view. Anytime you can find yourself an elevated view or a level from a lower angle, it breaks the traditional view of things and it, it makes it so that people want to look at it a little more quickly because they know there's something a little off. There's something that's not quite right in the view, not what they normally see, and they want to begin to ask questions. Why does this look different? Why is this unusual? Why am I attracted to it? So anytime you can elevate yourself, even a small amount of two feet, a foot and a half, or get yourself low so you break the horizon, you're going to end up with better photographs. Today, I elevated myself to get on top of the picnic tables. It worked really well. I could look down on the little valley. Nice that it was a valley, and I could look down on it already, but the extra two feet I had, two and a half feet, let me look down on it anymore, and I could get people walking across in a, in a path that kind of broke the, the distance from them to the background. They acted as an object in the foreground of a telephoto lens. It really turned out to be nice. Don't misunderstand. It's not an earth shatter. It's not going to win any prizes. It's not going to make you go, oh, my God, I wish I'd shot that. It's going to make you go, that's pretty good considering there's nothing going on and he had to find a picture and he did a pretty good job of it. So the real key here is, is don't be worried when things are not perfect. What you have to do is become more attuned to what your creativity can do with what exists. You know, there, there are people who, who are artists who get by with nothing more than a pencil and a piece of white paper. And I think that there are artists who could get by with a pencil and a piece of paper that's the same color as the pencil lead. I think they could find ways to express themselves. And today is one of those days where the pencil and the paper match the same tones. And you have to try to find something interesting. You have to challenge your creativity. You have to struggle to get there. But you do the best you can. And you go out and make photographs every single day. You pick up your camera, you 
begin to make photographs. That's what you need to do. I'm done for the day. You need to do all the YouTube stuff. You need to subscribe, ring the bell, comment, like, share, tell all your friends. Uh, just do all those things to make me feel better. Thinking about cutting this beard is really starting to bother me. I trimmed a little bit around the bottom where it bothered me on my neck. But I'm going to try to keep it as long as I can, for as long as I can, until it goes crazy. Make sure you subscribe. I need to get more subscribers. Make sure you like. That does a lot to make other people want to look at this. So just enjoy yourself. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, I'm going to keep doing it. Anyway, you're stuck with me. All right, I'm done. I'll see you. I'll be back in a minute. I promise. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> I told you I was going to sneeze. Oh.